Hi, and welcome to the Library 2035, Imagining the Next Generation of Libraries webcast series. My name is Sandy Hirsch, and I'm the editor of this book. I am pleased to host this webcast series featuring several of the book's contributing authors who will share their vision for libraries over the next decade. Today, I welcome Chris Brown, author of Chapter 5, Stories at the Heart of It All. Chris Brown is library commissioner for the Chicago Public Library, one of the world's largest library systems. In this role, he has prioritized equity and expanded access, implementing Sunday hours at every um, library location, launching the book sanctuary movement, appointing the library's first equity officers and creating new mental health liaison positions. Throughout chapter five, Chris Brown explains the power of storytelling to advocate for the value of libraries as well as the unique and diverse characteristics of the community it serves. So welcome, Chris Brown. I'm so happy to talk to you today. Sandy, thanks for having me. And I, I, I guess thank you for initiating this conversation about what does the future look like and pulling all these library contributors together. Oh, it's my pleasure. I'm so happy you said yes. Um, so let's get started. Uh, my first question for you is if you can briefly describe your vision for the future of libraries in 2035. Yeah, there's so many just factors at play as we're forecasting. We're thinking about AI and technology and workforce. Um, it's it's a tough question. Um, but when I was thinking about this prompt, I wanted to also take a look back at maybe the past decade. And it made me look look at some of Pew uh, and Pew Research's uh, findings about the perception of libraries in the US. And something that really stood out to me was just this majority of Americans who are, are pretty much all in agreement that libraries expand opportunities, libraries um, drive uh, improvement around literacy and reading. Um, but what stuck out to me was this other data point, which was that really only about a quarter of Americans understand the scope of the services that libraries offer. And it really made me reflect on this challenge that I think we have now around how do we tell better stories? Um, and it made me reflect on the capacity and skill that we have in our field around storytelling. And just the irony that this, this sector that's so tied to stories and storytellers um, could be doing a better job ourselves in, in our, our narrative. So my future vision is that, uh, you know, going forward to 2035, we are uh, better at communicating our, our value and that people understand what we do as uh, in our portfolio as a whole. Yeah, that's great. That's a really ironic uh, point that you made about the and that libraries, you know, being uh, so connected to the storytellers. Yet we are not necessarily doing as good a job in that space as we could. So, um, I think that's an interesting point to have made. And I do think stories are very important. So, what are you as we're looking ahead at the future? What what concerns you about the future of libraries? I think we're looking at this dialogue right now about um, the role of libraries, the role of our our First Amendment access. And I think there's there is some perception that um, that that access to those diverse stories maybe isn't needed. And so I think what what kind of concerns me right now is some of that, messaging and how we're um, seen as a field across the entirety of our country, right? We, as libraries, we serve everyone. We serve our um, our Republicans, our Democrats, our um, independent parties. And I think we, we really do need to um, focus on narratives that 
tell that story of how we're impacting everyone. Um, and I, I, I think there is some incredible talent in our field that we don't necessarily tap. Um, so many of, of the, the library leaders that I've, I've looked up to, um, it, it's not always even a position thing. The, these may be librarians in a neighborhood library or a branch manager, but you can, you, you can tell the impact that they have on people. These are oftentimes our children's librarians. These are people who are just incredible storytellers, incredible at engaging audiences. And I think they're this untapped resource in terms of positioning us. Um, and I have a, a couple of examples I can get into later. Okay, great. And uh, so on the flip side of that, I'd love to hear, what are you most excited about for the future of libraries? I mean, there's so, there's so many parts of what we do. Um, I think, I think literacy is, is a, a big, big contribution that we can make to equity in our country, um, just in terms of positioning our youth and giving them a, a, a lifetime of equity through their, their literacy journey. And oftentimes that starts at those um, experiences with our, our children's librarians, with families and our early literacy collections. And, and so what really excites me is us being more competent as a field, learning from our, our own competencies within our libraries, um, becoming better storytellers. I, I look at I look at um, Michael Threets in Solano County Library, who's become this real like social media sensation around telling these just really everyday intimate stories about the impact that um, he sees in his in his visitors. I think what was done by Brooklyn around the Jay-Z exhibit is just this incredible example of how we can be working with our civic leaders in, in telling some of our stories. Um, and, and in Chicago, when, when we were in the midst of the pandemic, we had this incredible moment where as a city, everyone's sheltering in place and we launched our, our Live from the Library campaign. So we had storytellers like Oprah and Obama and um, Kristen Bell, and they all came together and and did these virtual story times. We had over 2 million views in the midst of COVID. Um, and, and so what excites me is how we help position libraries and tell our stories through, um, through storytellers, through partners and other civic leaders. That, that visibility really excites me. Yeah, that's really exciting. Those are all excellent examples of uh, really inspiring um, opportunities that libraries have to, to, to offer something really meaningful to their communities. So what do you think has had the biggest impact on libraries over the past decade? You know, I, I, I think um, there's been so much work that libraries have been doing around meeting people where they are. And, and what I mean by that is some of the, the mental health, social service um, programming that we see libraries doing. And I think it's, it's been sort of a necessity. We're, we're trying to serve all of our communities. That means we have to meet people where, where they are. Some people need more, um, you know, whether it's Narcan access or mental health services or social services, before we can start to get to their like learning needs or digital skill building. Um, and, and so I think that's been a huge part of the last decade. And I think it does get back to storytelling. I think we do have this challenge right now in our library field where I don't, I don't think as a field, um, we we completely understand that story. We have, I think, many staff who scratch their heads around, is this the right thing for libraries to be doing? Um, uh, what role should we, we what role should we be playing 
in that social service sector. Um, and I do think it gets back to storytelling. Like we as a field need to be doing a better job in telling that story about why we're getting into that arena. Um, and I think we need to be doing a better job with our city and county stakeholders who are making these asks of us to, to talk about how does that work fit into the story of what a library does? Yeah, I think that's a really interesting point that you're making um, about connecting some of the kinds of things that libraries today and or or have are needing to provide to their communities and not being aligned with uh, some people's perspectives uh, around what a typical prototypical library should be doing. So I think there's a lot of shifting, probably both as you're, I think you were saying, both in the community mindset and, and uh, for politicians and other folks, but also and stakeholders, but also within our own field as well. Absolutely. Um, so what do you think will have the biggest impact on libraries in the next decade? I, I think it's always that unknown. It's always that that thing that um, we can't necessarily see coming. Um, I, I'm, I'm really interested in seeing like, well, how does AI impact um, reference services? How does that impact? visitation. Um, I think as a field, we have this challenge right now around the post-pandemic audience engagement. Um, there's There's been a substantial impact in in-person visitation. That's also been coupled with this incredible rise where libraries have seen triple to quadrupling uh, online visitation and digital engagement. Um, and so I, I, I really think the next 10 years is going to be, uh, it, it's this open question about, are we having more in-person engagement and bringing people back? Do Have people built up all of this COVID behavior and habit around digital access? And does that mean we really see a, a more substantial shift in that direction? Do we start to use our in-person engagement in different ways and think about thinking about the strategy of, of, of what works better in person, what works better digitally. I, I think the, the ramification of a, a global pandemic is something that we're going to really work through in the next decade. It, it's going to really shape what library service looks like. Yeah, I, I agree. I think there are a lot of open questions and I've appreciated in this book of people's uh, different perspectives and trying to think through what we can expect in the future. Um, so I was wondering uh, in the few months since you've submitted your chapter, whether your thinking uh, related to what you wrote has changed at all. When I wrote this, we were in the midst of our 150th anniversary in Chicago Public Library. So we were really steeped in our storytelling. Um, we launched a, a, a podcast, Library for the People, that's had tens of thousands of listeners tune in. Um, it really allowed us to connect with our history. Um, Chicago Public Library authored the first intellectual freedom statement, even, even before ALA's um, uh, Bill of Rights. It was really at the height of McCarthyism, um, a response to requests and interest in book banning. Um, and so I was really steeped in this topic of, of storytelling. Um, but I think even since then, seeing colleagues like Michael Threets in Solano County and thinking about um, Brooklyn's Jay-Z exhibit and just how much visibility that brought to their library. I know our, our team paid a visit out to Brooklyn and um, hearing about how their their monthly visitation nearly quadrupled during the life wow. of that exhibit and how much more eyes on their library and just people who are engaging with their library came as a result. I, I'm more um, convinced that there's a real uh, role to be played in in 
amplifying and lifting up the storytellers in libraries. And of course, Milwaukee Public Library's TikTok is is um, just absolutely hilarious. So I was wondering if you have, as we're looking toward the future, if you have any advice for information professionals. I think um, we we attract people with a, a strong uh, value around reading and education. Um, I, I think there's a lot to be said, though, for the the human um, element of our work and just um, being in institutions where you're working with colleagues and um, information and, and books and content is a big part of that. But I think there's a real need for people coming in with um, or, or growing their ability as facilitators, as communicators, um, relationship builders. Um, the information and knowledge and books are are these incredible tools that we get to facilitate the use of. But all 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 underlying that is this human component, um, and I think there's a real need a need to um, build capacity and talent around. Uh, relationship engagement and um, development of, of partnerships and how do you facilitate teams really adeptly. Um, those are, I think, all of the um, intangibles that make us a better library. And is there anything that information professionals can do to better prepare for their desired future? I, I think it's so context-based. So, so at San Jose State, you have so many uh, information professionals going through your program. So you might have um, informatics or um, people in like data analysis or public librarians or academic librarians. So um, I, I think the best thing that people can do is really talk to other people about um the work that they're striving to to enter and find out what is it actually like how do people build that capacity um i'm not trying to give a plug for sjsu but i, I remember being in, in the program and that was one of the key assignments was go do your do your information interview I, and i remember i i had a conversation with the head librarian at sf moma because i was convinced i wanted to be a a museum, a museum archivist, and um, getting like to take a peek into their work, I, I really saw like, oh, this is maybe different than what I envisioned, and it, it did lead me to go into maybe some academic library work and then public library work, um, and and that was really illuminating. So I think just talk to people who are doing the work that you want to do, learn from them. Um, and and just shout out to SJSU for encouraging that kind of um, real world learning. That's great. That's a great story, um, and I'm really glad to hear how. You know, I think those uh, those explorations are really important. I, I would also put in a plug for doing internships for similar reasons. Yes. Um, yeah. So, what are what do you think are some of the key competencies that librarians are going to need to thrive in in the next decade? You know, by twenty thirty five. I mentioned facilitation. I think mm -hmm. all, all all of our work ultimately involves our colleagues and other people, and so building um, building that facilitation muscle. Um, you know. How do you how do you constructively work through different points of view, right? Like that's just going to happen. Um, I think those are such critical skills. Like how do you go through disagreement and group work in a way that leaves the group stronger? Um, I think those are in just incredible um, skills and and. There's classes on like facilitation. Um, those are muscles that people can build. Um, 
I, I think, you know, having written this article about storytelling, um, I think there are lots of, uh, of venues for people to develop those. There's classes on, um, on storytelling in libraries with youth, but then there's also programs where people can, you know, I know IDEO offers classes on storytelling. I think all that builds is, is better, better communication skill. And so I think that's something that um, helps in any capacity you're working in, helps you communicate better with your team, helps you communicate better with the public, your, um, your administrative leaders. Um, I think, I think facilitation and storytelling, it, it's only going to serve people well. I have one last question for you. It's a hard one. I'd love for you to define your view of the future of libraries in six words. I'm going to, I'm going to take the prompt as like under six words. I'm gonna yeah, six less. words or less. Yeah. yeah. Six, six I, I, I think less. just um, stronger storytelling, stronger libraries. I think the, the more awareness we can build, um, the better we'll be in terms of positioning ourselves and having people understand what, what, what value we bring to the communities we serve. I think that's a beautiful, a beautiful vision for the future. So I'd like to uh, thank you, Chris Brown, for joining me today. And I want to thank you again for your contribution to Library 2035, Imagining the Next Generation of Libraries. It has been an absolute pleasure to talk with you today and to hear more about your vision for the future of libraries. Sandy, thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Thanks for all you do for the profession at SJSU. Well, thank you. And I'd like to thank the um, and I thank those of you who are attending this webcast with Chris Brown, author of Chapter Five: Stories at the Heart of It All. To view additional author webcasts from this Library 2035 webcast series, please visit the link or use the QR code on your screen. And thank you again.